it's good to be in the house of the Lord. And uh, a nice rainy day. I look forward to these rainy days. They're so few and far between this time of the year. I enjoy a nice rainy day. It's, it's relaxing. And w welcome every, each and every one of you, especially our visitors. Our pastor will, will single you out individually, but uh, it's good to be here. And it's good to see the decorations for the season, the hard work that the decorating committee put in. Um, one, um, just one note, read your announcements in the bulletin. But the one thing that's happening this evening is the, the church social, the Christmas social. So uh, you want to make note of that. I believe it's, is it 6.30 p.m.? So we'll, um, all of you who are able, come out for, for that. Well, I, the, <laughs> yeah, we got plenty of room inside. If yeah. uh, we'll we'll play videos of campfires, maybe or something, but uh, we'll we'll adapt whatever happens. The um, wherever uh, those who can, should we just stand for the invocation this morning? Father, we thank you for this time that you have given us. We thank you for life. We thank you for your life that you sacrificed for us. And we commemorate this season when you came as a little baby, as a little human, became one of us. Lord, we pray that we, in a small way, can understand the sacrifice you made for us. Lord, give us a heart for you. Give us a new heart that will always work for, for the spreading the gospel. Lord, we pray that you will be with us in a special way today, that this Sabbath day will change us forever. Each Sabbath day as we draw closer and closer to you. Lord, we thank you for your love for us. We thank you for the love for each other in this place where we can worship. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Just remain standing, and the opening hymn is hymn number 132. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Our opening hymn is number 132, O Humble Ye Faithful, number 132.
It's time for our morning prayer, and I'd like you to take out the insert in your bulletin. There's a long list of people who are on our prayer list, including church members, shut-ins, and family members. Are there additions to this list that we need to add? Roy Ashley. Yeah, and tell him we are praying for him, concerned about his health. Are there others that we need to add to this list? Are there unspoken requests? Wherever possible, shall we kneel for prayer? Father, we are humbled coming before you this morning. We first of all must ask for forgiveness for the mistakes we have made, for the sins we have committed as a church and as individuals. Lord, we pray for your mercy on us. We thank you for your love for us, that the many sacrifices you made for us Lord, we look at this prayer list this morning and the length of it. We pray for each individual, including Roy and the many others on this list. And we pray for the, that your will will be done in each of our lives and each of the lives of those on this prayer list. We, Lord, we think of the service to follow and we pray for inspiration for those who are taking part and for our pastor as he gives us the words of inspiration, the words from the Holy Spirit. We pray that your Holy Spirit will infill each of us this morning. Give us the understanding. Take us back to the time when you were born as a baby and you made the lived the life that we should have lived and died the death that was ours. Lord, we think of forward, we look forward to your soon coming, and we pray, Lord, that each of us will be ready when you come, and we look forward to that day in Jesus' name, amen. Dr. Green is showing up just right on time. I was looking around and trying, thinking quickly of what kind of story I could make up if, if he didn't. It's time for the children's story and the children's offering. We invite the young people to go back and to get their baskets and bring their offerings and to stay by from us for a story from Dr. Green.
Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning, big boys and girls. Just turn to the person on your left and right, give them a big smile, nothing more, just a smile. Okay. It's always easier when we smile. Well, who remembers what happened to you three years ago? Do you remember anything that happened to you three years ago? Do you remember anything that happened to you three years ago? <laughs> uh, we have some late bloomers graduating from high school. Um, well, I'm counting on the fact that your memory is not that good because this is one of my favorite stories that I shared three years ago. And I'm just going to sit here while she steps up. Well, boys and girls, this story is about the three trees. The three trees. Well, on a mountaintop, there were these three small trees. And they, they were still small and growing, but they had a, a talk. And they, they said, the first tree said, you know what? When I grow up, I want to grow tall. I want to be the most beautiful tree in the whole world. And you know, when, I'm, when I get old, I want them to make a beautiful chest out of me. And that chest will be covered with gold and filled with precious stones, and I'll be the most beautiful tree in the world. And the second little tree said, as he looked down over the valley and he saw a stream on its way to the ocean, he said, when I grow up, I want to be a mighty ship, and I want to carry strong, powerful kings. Yes, when I grow up, I'm going to be the strongest ship in the world. And the third tree said, you know what? As he looked down on the, and saw a busy town with people running around doing this and doing that, and he said, you know, you other trees, I don't want to leave this mountaintop at all. In fact, I just want to grow nice and tall so that my branches point toward heaven. And when people think of me, they will think of God. Well, many, many years passed by, boys and girls. The rains came and the sun, the sun shone on the, on the trees, and they grew and they grew, and now they were very tall. And one day, three woodcutters climbed up the mountain. And the first woodcutter, he looked around and he said, Ah, this is a beautiful tree. This is the one I want. And with a powerful swipe of his shiny axe, the tree fell down. Then the second woodcutter came and he looked around at the remaining trees and he said, Ah, oh, this is the perfect tree. It is strong and big. This is the tree I want. And with a swipe of his shiny axe, the second tree fell. And as the third woodcutter approached, the third tree shuddered with fear and sort of pointed branches almost like in folded hands toward heaven. But you know what? The woodcutter, the third woodcutter, didn't even bother looking at the tree. He just said, any old tree will do. And with a swipe of his shiny axe, the third tree fell. Well, the first tree was taken by the woodcutter to a carpenter's shop. And the, the tree smiled, oh, this is great. This is going to be just what I want. I'll be made into the most beautiful chest in the world, covered with gold and filled with precious stones. But that's not what happened. Instead, she was formed into a feed box, not filled with precious stones, but with sawdust and set aside. 
And the second tree was taken to a shipyard. And that second tree smiled, oh, this is fantastic. This is my dream come true. I'm going to be made into a mighty ship sailing the oceans and having powerful kings at my helm. But that's not what happened. The second tree was not made into a big ship. It was made into a small little boat. And the little boat was not made for the oceans. It couldn't even go on rivers. It just could go on little lakes. And the tree was disappointed. And the third tree was all sad because it was just divided up into big, strong beams and left in a lumber yard. Well, many, many years passed by, boys and girls, and one day, one evening, there was a bright, shining star. And it was right over a barn or a stable. And inside was this sound. And a little baby was born. And the husband said, oh, I wish I had a manger for our baby boy. But the mother just patted his arm and said, oh no, this one is beautiful. It is made of sturdy wood, it's so strong, and the baby fits in there perfectly. And just then, the first tree knew that he was holding the greatest treasure in all the earth. About 30 years later, a tired traveler and his companions got into a small little boat and they were crossing the lake. And the tired traveler fell asleep when all of a sudden there was a big storm and it came up suddenly and the boat was being tossed back and forth and the second tree knew, I'm not strong enough to carry all these people safely across the ocean, across the lake. And then the tired traveler woke up, stood up, stretched out his hand and said, peace, be still. And just like that, the water became smooth. And the second tree knew right then that he was carrying the king of all the world. About three years after that experience on the lake, the third tree was startled when some rough hands just picked it up and carried it away through a crowd that was mocking and jeering and laughing and spitting. And the, little tr the third tree shook when somebody was nailed to its beams. And that was when the third tree realized that it was the savior of the universe, the one that pointed toward heaven that was on its tree. And the third tree said, this is so much better than being the tallest tree in the world. Boys and girls, we're coming into a time, we're just about nine days away from what we celebrate as Christmas, where we're expecting gifts, and I hope that 
you also give gifts to those you love. But I want you to remember this, boys and girls, that Jesus is the reason for the season. Happy Sabbath. Before you go, because you all look so good, I have something for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No latecomers to the platform. Uh, for each of you, I have something to make you look really good. Any ideas? Okay, hang on. If you were sitting up here, you would have noticed he looked at those ten and looked at me and shook his head. There's nothing going to make you look any better. <laughs> Just live with what you got. As Dr. Green was telling the story, I thought of, of that baby crying broke the silence of 400 years. Israel had prophets up to Malachi, and there was 400 years of silence. Then God sent his own son, and he sent him not only for, for Israel, but for all of us. And on the front of your bulletin are the three wise men. That story is told in Matthew 2, and there's just 12 verses telling the story of these men. And these men had studied the prophecies unlike the children of Israel who were God's chosen people, who were totally surprised and even rejected the Son of God. These men were searching. And it says that they studied the, the prophecies of Balaam. Remember Balaam and the talking donkey? He was involved with these people and one of, one of them many years before. They studied the prophecies of Daniel. They knew exactly when this child was coming. And they watched the skies. And it tells in the book Desire of Ages that they were watching the sky one evening and the whole horizon lit up. And as that brightness faded, a star appeared. You know what that star was? We've heard stories of it was a comet, it was a convergence of planets. Uh, Sister White says it was a band of angels leading them to the Holy Child. We try to explain away the miracles. But what this has to do with our offering this morning, what did those men do to worship the King of the universe? They brought their gifts. This morning we have been blessed in so many ways, blessed by Jesus coming and making the sacrifice. As you give your offerings this morning, think of those wise men and the offerings they brought. We too should bring offerings to the king of the universe. We ask the deacons to come as we have the morning prayer for the offering and in the, and we receive the offerings. Father, we thank you for the many, many sacrifices you made for us. This morning, Lord, we are going to bring our offerings of worship and of praise and return our tithes to you in thanks for just a token that we can give back to you. You have given us this opportunity to worship you with our offerings. Lord, we pray that you will bless these offerings. May they be a part of closing this work on this earth so we can all go home with you and enjoy eternity together and with you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
we're privileged to have a, the pastor give us our message this morning and then a Christmas program this morning. Happy Sabbath, church. How are you all doing? Boy, it's an interesting day, to say the least. It's beautiful. We have a, a Christmas musical program today, but it's... Uh, it's been a horrible weather for the last two, three days, and uh, people get scared. Um, we are just happy that we can be together in the house of the Lord. There's a few names that I'd like to recognize. Um, people that are visiting, and people that... Uh, um, have decided to come and worship the good Lord with us. I'll mention a few names. If you're here, please stand up. Tiffany and Chevelle. Yes, indeed, back there. <laughs> Welcome, Tiffany. Tom Burns' daughter, right? And grandson? Yeah, <laughs> excellent. So glad you're here and so happy that uh, you've decided to, to worship God in this particular day. How about Caroline Ryu? Caroline Ryu, yes, you are here from visiting from <laughs> Quebec, right? And you, you put here Sabbath keeping believer. So we're happy that you made it. We're happy that you're planning to be here with us tonight. As a matter of fact, I heard that you were invited and you said, absolutely, I'll bring two or three more friends along with me. Jacob, I just met Jacob a little while ago. Jacob, are you with us? Yes, back there. <laughs> Jacob, Jacob lives in Sebastian and um, and he said, Pastor, I, I saw one of your sermons for Thanksgiving, wanted to see how the church looks like, and he is looking for a friendly church. Jacob, you found the right one. <laughs> Indeed, we are thrilled, we are happy, blessings to you. Anybody else who happens to be here for the first time but did not get to fill out a card? Anybody else? Yes, we do. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. The Egan family is here with us. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back. So good to have you back in town. Amen. I love that. All right. Um, yes, we do have someone else. Please. Oh, beautiful. Excellent. Welcome. So good to have you with us. I don't want to miss anybody. If there is someone else, please stand up. All right. I think we've covered it all. Um, 
like you to know that the Melbourne Seventh Adventist Church is not just a friendly church. It's a church where you can really have a good relationship with the Lord and each other. Welcome. Talking about church members, I'd like to ask our church clerk to come up here, Lucy Sanchez, and she's got good news for us. So Lucy, tell us exactly what's going on. Good morning, church. <laughs> morning. We have a lovely couple that's being transferred from Woodbridge, Virginia. John and Lydia Woodall. Would you stand up, please? John and Lydia Woodall. Yes. I'd like to make a move that we accept John and Lydia to our, new, to our church here. Okay, it's been moved. Do I hear a second? I, I second? All in favor, please give him a good round of applause. Amen. Welcome to the Melbourne Church. <laughs> yes, so good to have you with us. You know, I, I, I can't just stay here, so I'm just going to go back there. I'd like to give you guys a hug and let you know that we are pleased, that we are happy, and that the church will be blessed with your presence. Welcome. Welcome to the Melbourne SDA Church. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Lucy. I just, I just got to say these, and I know that we shouldn't take too much time in announcements, so but we're going we're gonna to take about 15, 20 minutes on this announcement. So, uh, just a couple of minutes. Uh, tonight, there is something good going on in church. Can anybody tell me what's going on at 6.30 here in church? Anybody? Uh-huh, Christmas social. How do we call that? Camp Fire Christmas. Yes. It's a time to get together. It's a time to eat together. It's a time to play together. It's a time to really socialize and do things as a church and friends of the church. So this is the deal. Um, you probably heard that... Uh, uh, there was there was a group, good group of people working on the gingerbread uh, houses, and guess what? We've got plenty of gingerbread houses. Margaret was telling me that uh, we no, we do not have 20 or 25, but we have 55 gingerbread houses, and that needs a lot of people to work on. So if you're planning to be here, plan to be here along with friends or family, all right? It'll be lovely to have you here. I know the weather is crazy, but guess what? Um, it's Christmas time. There is no hurricane season right now, so um, we should be good. Yeah, there might be a little bit of rain, but, uh, uh, but it's okay. Um, I know there is a lot of activities going on, and there is a lot of things that we can do together. So uh, make sure you pl make plans, come, and have a great time. That being said, it's time for us to open God's word and let him talk to us. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, this is such a beautiful time of the year. Not because of the weather, not because of all the things people are selling or buying, 
but because of a reason for the season. Jesus Christ would like to allow you to impress upon our minds the truth from the Bible and for us to practice and to follow through. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'd like to start with an opening statement. If you want to understand Christmas, you must get to know who Christ is and what he came to do. I'm going to put it in a different way. The mission of the cross is hidden in the message of the cradle. Question for you all. How are you doing hanging on to Christ this Christmas? Because that's what the question should be. It's not about having time or not to buy presents. It's about hanging on to Christ this Christmas. I'd like to spend time in a beautiful passage from the Bible. Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. Now this passage will give us an extended genealogy of Jesus to show his humanity as well as his divinity. So I'd like to ask two beautiful girls, Kate and Christy Purley, to come up here. They will be reading for us. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way, when his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph before they came together. She was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband, Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son. And he called his name Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Kate, Christy, thank you so very much. You did great. You did excellent. So that's the passage. Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. For our purposes today... We'll concentrate in verses 21, 22, and 23, where we are given a couple of names. Now, question here. Who knows how many names and titles of Jesus are there in the Bible? How many names and titles of Jesus are there in the Bible? Anybody? At least 30. You're right. At least. Yeah, who said 100? Who gives more? If you said close to 200, you got it right. To be exact, 198. 198. Now, in Bible times... Names didn't just distinguish or label a person. 
names reveal the very nature of an individual. In the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, the term for name means individual mark. Did you get that? Individual mark. In the New Testament, the word for name comes from a verb, and it means to know. So I'd like to suggest to you that to know the names of Jesus means to know him personally. I'll mention just a few names. And as I do, I'm pretty sure they'll come back to your mind. Bread of life. Good shepherd. Redeemer. Mediator. The great I am. Light of the world. Lamb of God. Lord of lords. King of kings. Man of sorrows. Teacher. Alpha and Omega. Day spring. Judge. Wonderful counselor. Mighty God. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, and Jesus. Now, the last two names are found in our passage today. What Kate and Christy read in Matthew chapter 1, 18 through 25. So let's examine the profound meaning of those two names. Okay? Bible says, you shall call his name Jesus, and he called his name Jesus. And then in Matthew 1, 23, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. All right? Both names are also defined in the Bible. All right? You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And then it says, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. So let's consider, let's consider these two names in reverse order. We'll start with Emmanuel. All right? Emmanuel. Here we go. Because God is with us, because he is with us, he forbears with us. Let's take a look at verses 22 and 23. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Details surrounding the birth of Jesus were predicted by the prophets hundreds of years before. As a matter of fact, this quote is from the Old Testament, the book of Isaiah, chapter 7, verse 14. The word behold by the prophet behold was used to arrest attention. Because what God was about to do was intended to be shocking, was extraordinary. It was unexpected. It was startling. It was surprising. Take a look at what, what, what happens here. Behold the virgin. Now, it's a, it's a definite article. All right? It's a definite article because it in, indicates that God had in mind one specific virgin named Mary. Mary whom he had chosen to become pregnant by the Holy Spirit. The virgin will conceive and bear a son. That shows Jesus' humanity. But then, 
The next phrase shows his deity. And shall call his name Emmanuel, which literally means with us, God. The Bible says God with us, but literally it's with us, God. Church. I like to suggest that God is not a distant God. Many Christians view God as majestic, mighty, but they also believe that God is mad at them, that God is angry at them, that God is furious at them. And it's not until we learn that He is gracious, loving, and near to us that we have a better and closer relationship with the Lord. When Adam and Eve sinned, the Bible says that death entered the world. Separation took place between creator and creation. For example, boundaries were established around the perimeter of Mount Sinai when God gave the Ten Commandments. All right? Not everybody could go up there. Just one person. If you remember the sanctuary, curtains surrounded the most holy place in the sanctuary. And people were allowed to approach God at certain times. And when they did, in the holy place, they had to bring certain sacrifices in order to be acceptable. To God. But then Galatians chapter 4 and verse 4 says, But in the fullness of time, in the fullness of time, God parted the heavens and came down to dwell intimately and personally with his people, God with us, Emmanuel. If you really want to know what Christmas is all about, I'm going to read a passage in the book of John, chapter 1, verse 14. And this is what Christmas is really all about. We're going to read that together. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen His glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. We'll have a musical interlude and we'll continue with the sermon in a few minutes. Happy Sabbath, Church. As you can see, this is, this is Kai McKay. <laughs> Cavell Green will be um, singing very low. As you, can, as you know, I'm back in the classroom, and I have overuse of voice. So <laughs> Kai will be singing for me, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Thank you.
Happy Sabbath. We're going to do something a little different here with this. With this. Um, we all know a way in a manger. And, but there's two ver versions of it. Did you know that? How many knew that there's two versions of it? Okay. So there's two versions of it. And we're going to sing both the versions. Now, because it's done in the same key, we're going to sing them together. So Cheryl is going to sing the one that everybody knows, that you hear at every children's program. She's going to sing that, the first verse. The second verse I'm going to sing, and this is the verse that's in the hymnal. Um, this is the version. This is the not so popular version, but it's in our hymnal. Then we're going to sing the third verse together on her side with the piano, on my side with the organ. The different thing is we're going to sing the first verse again together, but all of you guys are going to sing too. So anybody on this side, you're going to sing with me and the organ. I, want you to, I really want to hear you guys. And on this side, you're going to sing with Cheryl. Now, once you hear the version that nobody really knows, you'll know it. But if that makes sense. So when it comes time, again, we're going to go three verses, and then we're going to do the last verse, and everybody's going to come in. OK? Her side. My side. Thanks. <coughs> It's number one, two, four in your hymnal.
Did you know that your baby boy would someday walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm a storm with his hand? Did you know Emmanuel, God with us. I'd like to say that God is with us when we are weeping. God is with us at all times, and he will never leave us or forsake us. So today... Let's allow Emmanuel to fill our emptiness with a sense of satisfaction, with a sense of meaning, with a sense of connection. And the second name is Jesus. Jesus. Because he is Emmanuel, he is with us and forbears with us because his name is Jesus he is for us and he forgives us as well let's look at verse 21 again she will bear a son and you shall call his name Jesus for he will save his people 
from their sins. Hmm. Interestingly enough, the angel didn't say to Joseph like he did to Zechariah. When he came to Zechariah, the angel said, she will bear you a son. In this case, it wasn't like that. The, the angel said, she will bear a son. Because Joseph was not the physical father of Jesus. The name Jesus, or Jesus Christ, or Lord Jesus, was used around 600 times in the New Testament. Jesus is a Greek form of a Hebrew name. Translated as Joshua or Yeshua. The full name is actually Jehoshua, which means God is deliverance or God is salvation. Okay? That's what it means. Now, the mission of Jesus, according to the Bible, is to save people from their sins. As Savior, Jesus came to set us free from sin and to deliver us from the dominion of the, of the evil one. Later, when Jesus was brought to the temple by Joseph and Mary, a man named Simon, he came up to them and said about Jesus, For my eyes have seen your salvation. And then there was a, there was a lady who's been in the temple, Anna. And she spoke about the child and she said, That child, to all who are looking forward, he is Redemption to Jerusalem. Church, Jesus is both ordinary but also Emmanuel, extraordinary. He is Son, but He is also a Savior. He is holy, but he is also human. He is fully God, but he is fully man. He is God with us, and he is God for us. He forbears, and he forgives. That's who Jesus is. Because Jesus came to die in our place as the full and final sacrifice for our sins. Emmanuel took a human flesh, lived a perfect life, and then died a sacrifice for our sins. In exchange, Emmanuel gives us something beautiful. He gives us his righteousness. Because his substitutionary death demonstrated the Father's love and satisfied his justice resulting in the salvation of all who believe in him and repent and accept him as Savior and Lord. This wonderful gift is available free of charge. When you feel alone, remember Emmanuel is with, with you. He will hang on to you. When you feel lost, remember Jesus is for you. As one who forgives. Because he hung on the cross for you. John Newton, who wrote Amazing Grace, made this statement just before his death. And this is what he said. My memory is nearly gone, but I remember two things. That I am a great sinner and that Christ is a great Savior. Amen?
Church, ponder this. Jesus had to be Emmanuel to be Savior. And once he becomes your Savior, he also becomes your Emmanuel because he is with us. I'll finish with a quote from the Review and Herald written by Ellen G. White, September 17, 1889. What matchless love Jesus has manifested for a fallen world. If angels sung because the Savior was born in Bethlehem, shall not our hearts echo that glad strain? Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, good will to man. Although we do not know the exact day of Christ's birth, we would honor the sacred event. May the Lord forbid that anyone should be so narrow-minded as to overlook the event because there is an uncertainty in regard to the exact time. Or come, Emmanuel, into my heart. We'll continue with the musical program. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains, and the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strains. Thank you. 
if you think I'm nervous, you're right. <clears throat> I'm supposed to do a solo, but I'd like you all to join in if you don't mind. Uh, hymn number 141, What Child Is This? Sorry. Good morning. Happy Sabbath.
Our closing hymn is Joy to the World, number 125. Joy to the World, please stand. like to thank each and every one of the participants this morning. It's been such a special, beautiful, wonderful Christmas musical program. Thank you all. In a special way, I'd like to thank our music director, Nancy Handel. Um, she's been working hard on it making sure that everybody knows, make, making sure that uh, everybody was preparing. So, Nancy, here you are. Thank you so very much for everything you've done. <laughs> Let us close with benediction. Our Heavenly Father, there are so many names and titles we can call you. But today we've chosen two. Emmanuel. Because you are indeed with us. And because you forbear. And Jesus, because you are our Savior the one for us, the one who forgives. With John Newton, we realize that we are indeed great sinners. But we are so happy that we've submitted ourselves 
to the wonderful, merciful, gracious Savior, Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen.